This is just clear water I'm putting on just to lubricate the sky area so we can put the clouds in and everything will diffuse. Try and look as natural as we can. A bit more water. I want it nice and wet. I want this to be able to wet for at least two minutes. Give me a chance to get the sky in. First I'm going to put a bit of raw sienna. Straight raw sienna. Clean the brush. Now I'm going to put in ultramarine and this will be the sky that you can see between the clouds. Just here and there. This will be the water down there. It's going to get a bit more ultramarine. Strengthen it up a bit. We're going to want bigger clouds at the top and they're going to get smaller as they get to the horizon. That's the ultramarine. Now once I'm going to use Payne's grey, with just a little bit of alizarin crimson to make a cloud colour. And then in these gaps, I'm just going to pop a few clouds here and there. Remember, as they get to the horizon, they get smaller and smaller as they go. A bit of, put a bit of that cloud colour in the in the water. Now I'm back into the I'm gonna put the distant hills in. In fact first I'm just gonna pull this towards again. The paper stretch slightly. That's the advantage of wetting the thing all over because it, it stretches evenly. If you just do the sky area first and then wet the water area later, it tends to cockle more because this stays the same and that stretches. If you wet the whole thing first, it just stretches. You don't have to pre-stretch it then. So I'm back into the ultramarine with just a little bit of the uh, cloud colours. I'm going to do the most distant hills first. So up to about up to about there. These are the furthest hills. So I actually put drops of water and messed it up slightly, but hopefully I'll be able to cover most of that. As we come forward, I'm going to add a bit more lemon yellow to make it more, more of a greeny colour. A bit more lemon yellow, Payne's grey. So the closer, these are the closer hills there. Just coming down here, like this. Just trying to leave little, little white bits here and there, just to add a bit of interest. I'll make it a bit dark, a bit more Payne's grey. That's really dark green there. Coming right down to those far banks. So I'm just going to wash the brush. I'm just going to vary it slightly. Maybe put a bit of raw sienna. Just pop some of that in there just to line it, just to add a bit of interest. 
and we're going back into the the darker grey just very gently dips and dabs dark and that pines grey down towards the river banks just dip 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 and just kind of try and keep those parallel with the bottom of the paper because you, you don't it's going to look stupid if it's slanted up or down so that's that I just wanted just a hint just a hint of a shoreline so I'm back into the raw sienna just dipping the very tip of the hike into the water just to bring the hairs back together Just a bit of raw sienna, just a just a hint of a, a beach or something on the far side. Into the right, and just one quick pull through the pines grey. Not too much. A bit more raw sienna. Now that's that side finished. I just want to put a hill coming slightly closer down this side. It's going to have plenty of trees. I haven't even cleaned the brush, it's into the lemon yellow. Lemon yellow, Payne's grey. Working in it out. It's, it's higher than this side because we're closer. So I want to start off about there. A bit darker. And then bring it right down. We're going to end up somewhere around there. Something like so. I'm going to clean the brush and I'm going to go back into the raw sienna. I'm just doing it just purely just to change the colour slightly, try and make it. It just looks more interesting when it gives dark light, dark light. You're just looking for contrast all the time, just contrast everywhere. 